Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gay for Scratch and today we're talking about the G-Develop game engine. Now I've talked about this one a number of times in the past on this channel. I'm a big fan of this engine and I'm talking about it today specifically because G-Develop 5.6 was released. Technically 5.6.249. Cool thing about GDevelop is you can download it for free. It's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and then on top of that, web and mobile. And it actually works incredibly well on mobile. And I've always found GDevelop to be very beginner friendly. It uses a programming setup like this, where it's kind of a flow graph of things. So basically, uh, here at the beginning of the scene, this will happen. These are conditions. If those conditions happen, the functionality over here takes place. Uh, it's a very, again, intuitive way of coding once you get used to it. And on top of that, there are a ton of behaviors, etc., that have already been defined for you that you can use like building blocks for you developing your code. Now, the 5.6 release, though, has one major new feature. And you notice this level right here? Well, let me just hit this little button over here. And boom, we are in the new 3D editor. See, GDevelop added 3D functionality a couple of releases back, but it was very painful. Without the editor and the tooling to make it work, it wasn't really that useful. But now that this is here, this is a very easy to get up and going game engine for um, doing all kinds of stuff. So here you can see, again, here is our player in the world. Here is our level. Let's go ahead and quickly run this. You get an idea of the type of game you can create. By the way, this demo, uh, this is a new project that's available. It is called Wipeout. So you can create a new project and start here. So if you want to check out the 3D functionality, this is probably where you want to go. Uh, so let's just head on over here and not hit that spiky, th okay, I died. So it gives you an idea of what the game is all about. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll exit out of that. And you notice there was a UI layer there. Well, actually that is here. So you can see there, this is the UI layer that's being drawn over top. So you mix 2D and 3D together, but you have this full 3D editing functionality. On top of that, we've got a ton of behaviors to go with it. So for example, here, this is our player, which is ultimately being set up here. You're gonna notice it is built out of a bunch of behaviors. Like I said, you've got these predefined chunks of code that you can literally just drop onto an object and it will just um, work. So you got here, for example, physics. Now there's 3D physics available here in the form of physics 3D. A movement controller here, physics uh, car 3D functionality, uh, the, the gamepad manager for that, and so on. On top of that, there are a ton of plugins available as well that you can add to the engine itself. And then you're going to notice here, if I actually go ahead and edit this object out, so let's go here and edit the behavior of that object, you're going to see down here behaviors, there are a ton more. You're going to see specifically here, if I search for 3D, they've added a ton of new 3D behaviors that can go in there. And if I just get rid of that completely and we just show it, again, you can think of these as like building blocks or Lego blocks of predefined code. So if you needed to add something, make it drag and droppable, literally you could just add this behavior to the object and that's there. Same if you need a tween for um, in betweening two animations, literally just add that behavior to it. You need to add health or firing of bullets and so on. But you can notice we've added a ton of 3D ones to go along with this 5.6 release. On top of that, we also have a lot of 3D models being added to the library. So come up over here and we can add a new object into our scene. For example, here, go to the asset store, the root store over here, and you're gonna notice you've got, again, a ton of things, both commercial and free to work with. I like having these kind of assets available to everybody. It makes it much more accessible to use the engine. But you come on down here, you're gonna see we've got 3D models. Uh, you can add a 3D model into the scene. I've added a couple. You'll see a little house in the background. I added that already. But let's say I needed to add a bunch of snowy pine trees. So these are coming from, actually, I don't know who this one's created by. Oh, Quaternius. Uh, go ahead, we add that to the scene, and then boom, we have our 3D model available. So now you can notice over here, our 3D model should be, hmm. Oh, I added it up here in gameplay. So boom, there is our tree. And basically just add them into the scene. This is how easy it is to place an object. You notice you've got objects snapping to the surface to where you want to go which is very cool. So basically, boom, I put that up there. By the way, you can select something, hit F, and it will focus in on that object and automatically move to an orbit camera. Otherwise, you use the right mouse button and then your WASD keys to navigate around the scene. So now that you've got this full 3D editing environment, uh, and it's a lot, a lot easier to use than 5.5 and earlier, the 3D functionality, which was more setting the stage for getting here. Now, there's new features and functionality that is going to be coming online, but the big thing with this particular release is that GDevelop now has this 3D functionality. And again, it works pretty much the same as their 2D. It's kind of two ways of looking at the same scene. This is literally a top-down view of what we just created. So you can see there's the pine tree we just created there. 
Uh, so if I wanted to, I can actually make some edits to it. And then we switch back to the 3D, and then uh, it should, in theory, let me just snap that, now be all squished and weird. So you're still working the same way. It's just kind of a perspective view between the two options. Um, and it, it's if you're used to using the one setup, all you really need to learn is the navigation. So the WASD keys and hold down the right mouse button. And if you work with any 3D game engines, that's going to be immediately intuitive. Otherwise, it is the same setup. We have a number of new behaviors, a couple of new plugins to work with 3D which I suppose technically are called extensions. So you see down here, so we've got things like third-person camera, 3D walking, 3D ray casting, and so on. So there's a bunch of extensions available as well, and several of them are specific to 3D functionality. So it's, again, using the same approach as everything else, uh, but it, it's a kind of a new mechanism, uh, and we're in a new dimension now. Big step forward. There's not a lot of really easy-to-use 3D game engines out there. Uh, again, you've got things like Godot, even Unity, and Unreal Engine. They're, they're pretty easy to start placing things in 3D, but then, you, you know, there is more of a learning curve. I think you will find something like GDevelop. If the programming system, if this speaks to you, you're going to get a lot done. And also, the nice thing here is it's got all those assets available out of the box, great thing for beginners to participate with. So it's an excellent game engine for beginners. Also, like I said earlier on, it has an amazing mobile uh, version available as well. So if you're interested, it is available at gdevelop.io. As I mentioned, it is available for a variety of different platforms. Click out and try it here. You're going to see uh, all the various different versions available. So we've got uh, the mobile version for uh, iOS and uh, for um, Android, and on top of that, we've got Windows, Mac, Linux, and then from a different versions. And of course, you can run it directly in your browser if you want as well. And the browser functionality is it's almost the identical version. So it feels pretty much the same as running one of the desktop versions. So if you're using something like a Chromebook or in schools or et cetera, could be a good pickup there. Now, specifically to GDevelop 5.6, again, the obvious big thing here is the new real-time 3D editor that is available. A uh, ton of functionality that was there. So we added 3D physics based off of Jolt physics, support for shadows, 3D models with animation crossfade support, save state. 3D particle emitters, skyboxes, and then plenty of uh, ready-to-use behaviors, 3D characters, 3D car, third-person camera, and so on. Uh, and then, again, two ways of navigating, free fly and orbital. Uh, and then you've got the ability to basically use gizmos to control and position your objects in uh, in the world. Projection movement, that was like when we were moving the, those uh, items around in the world over here. So when I was instantiating uh, the trees into the world, for example, you see it's projecting and figuring out where to place them. It makes 3D placement so much easier to work with. Uh, grid snapping is also available. So if I press Alt while moving, so, let's do there. So navigate around, I can hit Alt and then see how I snap to objects as I do it. Uh, you've got your full manipulation tools up here. So your rotation and scaling gizmos are available there as well. Um, edit effects and properties in real time. So you got visual effects, dynamic lighting, skyboxes and property panels can all be edited. And then we've got the asset store, including that new 3D template that I mentioned earlier on. Um, and that is the, uh, sorry, created a new 3D templates, plural, uh, that you can work on from the, the create new project. So come back on here and when you just start things out, so here, uh, and creating a new game like so, you're going to find there's a ton of 3D ones here. So 3D driving, 3D first person shooter, and so on. And then the one that we looked at here is called Wipeout, available over there. But you're going to find, if you look at here, their templates, tons of stuff, and a ton of them are also available in 3D now. Uh, and yeah. There's more here, so and then what's coming next? So it's foundation, everything, the, the 3D editor is open source. Uh, in the future, we are going to get full manipulation of 2D objects, support for point and spotlights with real-time preview, collision meshes, custom shaders, uh, additional visualizations, more performance improvements, and so on. But yeah, now GDevelop has moved into 3D, although you could do this stuff by code. Now with an editor, it is legit uh, a whole lot easier to work with. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is GDevelop. 5.6, a move into the world of 3D. And uh, again, easy to use 3D game engines aren't really that common. Uh, it's one of the reasons I was so excited by uh, Un Unity Studio recently. It's kind of the same concept. And uh, this is here, ready to work with. And again, available on most major platforms, including mobile devices. And it actually works really well on mobile as well. So ladies and gentlemen, GDevelop 5.6, now in 3D. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.